Here we are, sitting in uh, our uh, not terribly tidy study. Um, Sign of uh, industry and diligence. Hmm, okay. <laughs> We have on Sunday the story of Zacchaeus, unless people are observing All Saints Day, which is actually yeah. the first of November. But um, we're going to stick to the story of Zacchaeus, and you have some thoughts, I hope. About yeah. That. So Luke nineteen one to ten on we go through Luke and Zacchaeus. Uh, who is Zacchaeus? First of all, Zacchaeus we hear is a tax collector and is rich. Uh, and I assume that means that he's done particularly well in terms of ripping off people locally because tax collectors in those days had to make their money by putting a fee on top of the taxes they were collecting. And if they were rich, they'd obviously put plenty on top. So um, Zacchaeus would have been hated, presumably, as a collaborator with the Romans. <clears throat> And we hear three things about uh, Zacchaeus when Jesus comes into Jericho. Well, first of all, he was presumably working and living in Jericho. But we hear that um, he was short and so couldn't get through the crowd to see Jesus. That he uh, ran on ahead and he climbed a sycamore tree in order to see Jesus. So what we derive from that is for some reason he wants to see Jesus. He's really keen to see Jesus. Secondly, he took a bit of a risk in the first place, even trying to get through the crowd to see uh, Jesus, because, you know, uh, just a few years ago, if you were on the West Bank uh, and you were a collaborator with the Israelis and you were in a Palestinian crowd, you could end up with a knife in your back from who knows where. Clearly, they weren't going to let him through. This wasn't an august man they were going to part the ways for. So again, you can see their antipathy towards Zacchaeus. So what does he do? So he runs on ahead in order to be able to find a, a viewing spot. The very fact that he runs again in the culture of the day would have been humiliating. He's desperate to see him and he doesn't care that this is something that, uh, you know, a respectful uh, older person shouldn't be doing. Um, and and he, he, he finds a sycamore tree and climbs up it. And if you ask why sycamore tree, sycamores had low lying branches and big leaves. Yeah, it, it, maybe. Well, it, it's but it's not actually a sycamore tree. It's not a sycamore tree as we understand it. It's no, a, it's a no. sycamore fig. Yeah, a sycamore so it's a type fig. of fig tree. Yeah. Um, and and indeed, as you say, they have, yeah. they have, they have low lying branches so and e big leaves. Easy to climb and easy to hide up. Yeah. But I understand that you could only have these trees outside. Of Jericho so perhaps he's got run on ahead in order to find a place where he thinks maybe the crowd will have dissipated. Okay, that's a detail I'm not aware of. So. Okay yeah. so okay. you know it, the, the crowd may have dissipated and so he, he gets to see him. So, so the idea is he, but, but he, uh, he wants to hide in, in this tree um, and again the, the, for an adult to climb a tree was just unheard of. I remember the story in relation to this of um, in the 1960s, the US ambassador in Egypt, similar Middle Eastern culture. Um, uh, Rumour had spread that he had actually climbed up a tree in order to decorate with Christmas lights the garden of the embassy for the staff party. And this was kind of like unheard of behaviour by an august and respected and authoritative elder, such as an ambassador. And when he next met with President Nassar, the Egyptian president, the president actually asked him, said, did you really climb a tree? <laughs> it was it's that kind of incredulous. Yeah. Yeah. So 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 this is not just a detail we might blink at, which we would do in our own culture. This is something that because you climb trees all the time. Is that what you're <laughs> I've never seen you climb a tree. <clears throat> Sadly, the video won't allow us to demonstrate that. But anyway, so. So by the time Jesus has got to him, all of this uh, detail has been revealed. And then Jesus seems to know who he is and despise him in there. So his cover is blown. Now, perhaps Jesus knows him because the crowd have seen him there 
and have been mocking him. Look, Zacchaeus up the tree and taking the mickey out of him. And um, the crowd are then anticipating what Jesus will say is, you sinner, come down from there, pay back all this money you've ripped people off with, and then maybe when I come back to Jericho next time, I'll be willing to speak with you. No. <laughs> Zacchaeus, come down from up there. I must stay with you today. Which is, again, culturally unheard of. It is always the host that invites and decides where and how you'll stay, not the guest. And remember that the opening line of this was, you know, Jesus had entered Jericho and was passing through. Now, hospitality would have been uh, foisted on him, but he's clearly refused it. So, so you can see why the crowd then immediately began to grumble. He's going into the house of a sinner and he's refused our hospitality as well. And he's going in there with that. And of course, he'll become ritually unclean as a result because he'll sit on his chair, he'll lie in his bed, he'll eat his food and so on. What kind of rabbi is this? And then last little detail from me. Uh, Robert Farrah Capon suggests that, um, that, that when, when Zacchaeus makes this speech then, uh, because he's been totally disarmed by Jesus about, you know, I will give, you know, all of this uh, money back to people. And, uh, and generosity and so on that he's actually saying this in his house at the meal with Jesus and this is the public speech that will be expected by the host and that perhaps he's using a bit of oriental uh, exaggeration to make the point that he's changing his ways and and, and, ch and and you know moving away from his former way of life but Capon suggests what you've got here, remembering last week's conversation about the Pharisee and the tax collector, is the words of the Pharisee in the mouth of the tax collector. So again, you've got, look at me, this is kind of like what I'm now doing, which I think is a bit harsh of Capon, but you can see the point he's making. And he suggests that what Jesus is saying when Jesus says salvation has come to this house is he's putting a, a pin in the balloon-like speech of Zacchaeus by saying, no, salvation has come to this house in my person. And you, you too are a son of Abraham because the son of man came to find the lost, mm. the least and the little. So he's reminding him of the way in which the dynamic of salvation is working. Now, that little bit at the end kind of like is one way of understanding Zacchaeus's speech. But the more tried and tested way is simply to uh, see that here we have very rarely in the Gospels the example of the recipient's response to the grace, the overwhelming grace of Jesus, and that that elicits generosity and humility uh, almost naturally as a consequence. So what do you think? Um, so uh, briefly then, briefly. <laughs> I, it, it, it's it's actually a lot more complicated story than than we think. We kind of we think we know the story, but mm. as you've demonstrated, mm. there are, there are uh, twists and turns in the mm. story, and and uh, one of the twists mm. and turns which you've 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 touched on is that when Zacchaeus makes his declaration, uh, where which is normally translated "I will mm. do this and this and this," the Greek is in the present tense. So it's actually a bit like, as you're mm. saying, the Pharisee and, and the tax collector. Uh, I do do this and this and this. Now, um, a couple of commentators have made, a, you know, Fitzmaier, for instance, has made a, a big deal of this mm. and pushes that interpretation. Uh, and that actually Jesus is there um, uh, not forgiving him for his past behaviour, but affirming him in his current behaviour. The odd thing is, why do you say I, you know, I give back four times as much as I have taken when you shouldn't be taking it in the first place? Mm. Mm. So so it, it doesn't quite work to interpret it that way. So then the question for me is, is Zacchaeus declaration? And I think I do think uh, Capon's interpretation is harsh. It is his declaration what earns him salvation or is it a response mm. to uh, the visitation of Jesus, which is his salvation? And, <clears throat> of course, you know, 
I think most of us would say the second. There are those who would want to say the first, um, which, again, doesn't make a huge amount of sense. And I think the important thing, I get, if you go back to thinking about uh, you know, Luke writing this, uh, including this story for the sake of his congregation, um, there is some clearly something going on about money in his congregation. Mm. We've assumed that they are probably includes at least includes people who are fairly wealthy. And there's something here about how do we use money and how are we generous with what we've ha what we have. Uh, so we haven't got the response of go and sell all you have. Mm. We have got the response of um, give what you have away. And uh, that that is a response to the experience of salvation. I mean, for Luke, salvation is here and now. Um, yes, there's a future dimension to it, but it's actually it's something that we we experience, we know here and now. And therefore, our lives are different. Mm. Therefore, we live differently. And Zacchaeus, I think, is a is an extraordinary example of that, um, who, having received that, as you say, that grace of Jesus' presence, his response is to change the way he lives. Mm. Even, he, he, he's not going to stop being a tax collector, it seems, but he is going to be a tax collector in a very different way than he has been. <clears throat> the other, kind of, the, 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 particular thing that strikes me is that there's a whole thing going on here about seeing and being seen mm. and actually at the heart of salvation what we long for what we absolutely long for is what Zacchaeus was desperate for which was to be seen the crowd uh, saw him saw through him saw him and ignored him he wanted to be seen yeah and and just loved mm. and that's salvation and and that's what jesus gave him uh and jesus gave him that because zacchaeus himself wanted to see jesus mm. yeah mm. and that's interesting the idea of being seen because you know what, what one of the ways of uh, talking about salvation rowan williams talks about salvation as uh, coming into the space that jesus opens up for us so you could see Zacchaeus coming down from his insulated and private and safe space, uh, coming down from the tree into a public and insecure and dangerous place, yeah, yeah. which Jesus secures for him by set, by this costly act of love to by to, to bring the anger of the crowd onto himself rather than Zacchaeus yeah. here, yeah, yeah. and and then the public uh, statement about what this leads to, yeah. yeah. And it, 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 just a, a, a final thing for me, D just thinking about that. Yes, the crowd, the crowd is angry towards Zacchaeus and then they are angry and confused towards Jesus. And there is that sense of Jesus taking on the sin. Yeah. Um, so we have an, e an <clears throat> echo, a reverberation of what is moving towards in Jerusalem here. Yeah. yeah. Mm.